Welcome to part two of the T5 to Volvo adapter. Again, for those who might not have watched, there's the adapter plate between the Volvo bell housing and the T5 transmission. And the intended recipient to the 1968 Volvo 122. I tried to mount the bell housing on the mill to bore out the center, but then I realized I didn't have a boring bar that would go big enough, about four and a quarter inches. So I put the faceplate on the mill for the first time, the first time I've used it for anything real, and bolted the bell housing to the faceplate using uh, the tie-down rods from my little mill tie-down kit. There's the four mounting bolts that bolt the bell housing to the transmission, and I just ran a threaded rod from the slots in the faceplate through those mounting holes and secured down. I've got a drill chuck in the register where the, the bearing register on the bell housing to help uh, line it up and get it centered on the faceplate. So after getting it centered using the chuck and snugged up, I went ahead and put a test indicator on it. Here you can see the mounting bolts that go through those holes in the bell housing. Got some couplers to couple several pieces of the uh, mill tie downs together. And it's a little bit sketchy, so I was careful to make pretty light passes the whole time. And the other thing I had to worry about was the clearance of the bell housing, making sure it cleared the lathe. It's a nice thing, nice to have a lathe that swings 18 inches so you can get something like that on it. And after banging around on the bell housing for a bit, I got it to run within a couple of thousands. To bore it out, I used a trepanning tool that I'd made a while back. It's probably a little wide, but I was worried about having enough meat to support it. And so I kind of took it easy. And the reason I'm boring this out is on the on the Volvo transmission bell housing combination. There's a bearing that sits up in that in the bore there that supports one of the, the transmission output shaft. Whereas on the Borg Warner T5 transmission, that piece is bolted to the transmission itself. So I have to bore this bell housing out so that that bearing cap will on the transmission will fit in that since it's not integral to the bell housing like on the Volvo's. So after getting that piece knocked out, I went ahead and started working at it with the boring bar and it was really boring. I, did not, I didn't dare take too heavy of a cut because of the, the way I had it mounted on the faceplate. I was worried if I took too heavy a cut I could shift it which turned out to be a valid concern, as you'll see later. But after a couple measurements and a lot of time boring, we got it out to the final, final uh, bore size, so I thought. I was getting pretty fancy spinning the bolts off and into the chip tray in slow motion. I think where I ran into the problem was I was taking you know, moderate cuts with the boring bar and cut right up to a few within a few thousands, taking a heavy cut, and then I took a the finishing cut, and I think because it was a light cut, some of the spring that had been in the tool came out, and so I ended up with a sloppy fit. As you can see, there's way too much play in that to work. But fortunately, we happen to have a couple extra bell housings laying around, so we're going to try it again. So mounting the next victim up to the lathe, this time determined to be much more careful in my measuring. You can see we got this one running really pretty close to a nice con concentric setup. 
So I decided I didn't want to spend so much time boring this time, and that I would go ahead and trepan it at a much larger diameter, but there were some parts cast into the center. As you can see, there's a little knob there that's circled that's going to give me no end of grief here in just a second as I part comes through and everything is cut but that mounting stud. So since we've got it on camera, we can do it once more in slow motion. And there it goes. And you see the whole part shift on the faceplate. And uh, I was a little bit startled myself. So all those, there were the, the internal contours meant that it cut through in almost everywhere except that one little spot. And then the part shifted and bound up. And you can see where it broke, where it broke off. And here's the, the tool actually shifted in the tool holder. Not a lot, but you can see it's shifted a little bit and not sitting flush to the back of the tool holder any longer. So it's time to clean up and see if we can salvage this part. This is one of those jobs that doesn't seem to be going real well. I, part of the problem is doing it in little pieces here and there when I have free time. You, Makes it a little bit tough, but a little bit of work at it. You can see I'm having a hard time getting the indicator to indicate on some concentric surface, which is obviously not that one. But after a minute, I got it in far enough and with a little beading on the part. You can see it's running within a few thousands. The big jumps are uh, some gouges that were left when the tool bound, it, it gouged into the side of the part as the part shifted. So it's within a couple thousand. So, so a couple passes with the boring bar and got it to the right size. Hopefully, again. And let's take a look inside there and see what the part was that caused so much trouble. Just get a quick glimpse of it here, but I. Took a steel. There's that little boss caused so much trouble. So with the bell housing board out and a good fit, it's time to try and bolt it all together. So there's four bolts that come through the transmission into the adapter plate. And then there's four bolts that go through the bell housing into the adapter plate. And with those, with that we can hopefully get this thing bolted onto the engine. So there's the final product. That's not the final transmission. The transmission I have is in much better shape. This was an old uh, scrap one. I think this one's got a couple bad synchros in it. It needs to be rebuilt. Um, I've got one nice clean one that's going to go in there. So that's the final look. You can see the additional holes if you were to rotate the bell housing and the transmission to orient the engine in a slant. You could see how you could you'd use those other holes to to bolt things together. And there's the whole unit. And now I'm trying to fit it up onto the engine that it's going to get bolted to. But it would have been nice to have help. Fortunately, there's some dowel pins in the engine that go into some holes in the transmission. I'm trying to hold it, hold the tail up while I get a couple bolts in to hold it. And here's the final result. Looks like it bolts up nicely. The engine can really use some cleaning. I've got to get that cleaned and repainted before we put it back in the car. There's a couple stills of the engine with the transmission on. And finally, a couple more stills of the car it's going in. A lot of uh, most of the work's going to be in getting the car put back together. But thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next one.